Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a topic that's both fascinating and a little bit, well, sad. We're talking about 10 animals that humans, get this, ate into extinction. Yeah, you heard that, right? We're talking about creatures that used to roam this earth, but because humans couldn't resist a good drumstick, they're gone. But hey, don't worry, we're gonna keep it light and fun because, you know, extinction is hilarious. Just kidding. But seriously, get ready for some crazy stories because some of these creatures are straight out of a prehistoric sitcom. First up, we've got the bird that's practically the poster child for extinction, the dodo bird. Picture this, you're a plump flightless bird just vibing on an island with no natural predators. Life's good, right? You're basically a feathered beach bum with zero worries. Enter humans. These guys show up with their boats and their appetites, and the dodo, with its complete lack of street smarts or any smarts really, was an all-you-can-eat buffet. They were like, hey, what's up, you guys want some snacks? And the humans were all, sure, we love snacks, especially slow-moving, delicious snacks. Next thing you know, the dodo is a distant memory, a cautionary tale told to picky eaters everywhere. But hey, at least the dodo got a really catchy name out of the deal. Dodo, it's fun to say. Dodo, dodo, dodo. Okay, I'm done. Okay, now imagine a sky so thick with birds that it literally blocks out the sun. No, it's not a scene from a Hitchcock movie, it's the passenger pigeon. These birds were everywhere, like the Animal Kingdom's version of a really crowded concert. They were like the Kardashians of the sky. Everyone knew them. But then, well, you can guess what happened next. Humans, with their insatiable hunger and their, let's face it, terrible planning skills, decided that passenger pigeons were the new hot menu item, so they hunted them. A lot. And by a lot, I mean a lot. We're talking millions and millions of birds gone in just a few decades. It's kind of like if someone ate all the pizza in the world, except instead of pizza, it's a species of bird. And instead of one person, it's, well, a lot of us. So yeah, not our finest moment. Next up, we've got the great auk, a bird that was, well, great in size, but not so great at flying. Seriously, this bird was like a penguin that forgot how to penguin. But hey, they were rocking that flightless life until humans showed up with a strange request. We love your feathers. Can we have them? All of them? See, back in the day, the great ox feathers were all the rage in the fashion world. They were like the Gucci of the bird feather industry. People couldn't get enough of them. They wanted hats, coats, you name it, all trimmed with the finest great auk feathers. And the great auk, being the trusting soul that it was, was probably like, sure, take a few feathers. What could possibly go wrong? Spoiler alert, a lot went wrong. Humans, being the efficient hunters that they are, hunted the great auk to extinction, all in the name of high fashion. Talk about a serious case of the feathers were worth more than the bird. Okay folks, buckle up because this next one is a real heartbreaker. Meet the stellar sea cow, a gentle giant that lived in the icy waters of the Bering Sea. This thing was massive, like seriously huge, bigger than your uncle's RV after Thanksgiving dinner. They were like the cruise ships of the sea cow world. But guess what, they were also delicious. At least that's what humans thought when they stumbled upon these gentle giants back in the 1700s. And you know what happens when humans discover something delicious, right? They turn it into a casserole. Okay, maybe not a casserole, but they did hunt the stellar sea cow for its meat, its blubber, and pretty much everything else they could get their hands on. And the saddest part? This whole extinction thing happened in less than 30 years. That's like the blink of an eye in extinction time. So the stellar sea cow, a creature so big it could have starred in its own King Kong remake. Now let's head down under to Australia, land of sunshine, kangaroos, and apparently some questionable life choices. This creature was basically a dog that decided to be a marsupial and honestly, who can blame it? Pouches are cool. Enter the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the thylacine. But here's the thing, humans, being the rational thinkers that they are, decided that the Tasmanian tiger was a threat to livestock. Maybe it was just too cool for school with its stripes and its pouch. Maybe it gave them the side eye one too many times. Why, we don't really know. Whatever the reason, humans declared war on the Tasmanian tiger, hunting it to extinction by the 1930s. And the worst part? It turns out that the Tasmanian tiger wasn't even that big of a threat to livestock. It's like getting a speeding ticket for going five miles over the limit, except instead of a ticket, you're extinct. Hold on to your hats, folks, because this next one is a real doozy. The Caribbean monk seal sounds peaceful, right? Like something you'd meditate with on a beach in Bali. 
Well, it was peaceful until humans showed up with their harpoons and their insatiable thirst for seal oil? Yeah, you heard that right. Apparently back in the day, seal oil was all the rage. They used it for lamps, they used it for lubrication, they probably even put it in their hair. And the Caribbean monk seal, with its unfortunate habit of, well, existing, was the perfect target. So they hunted them. A lot. And by a lot, I mean they hunted them until there were none left. The last confirmed sighting of a Caribbean monk seal was in the 1950s and it's been downhill ever since. It's like that time you ate the last cookie and then pretended you didn't know what happened to it. Except, you know, with extinction. Okay, get ready for a real tearjerker, folks. This is the story of Lonesome George, the last known Pinta Island tortoise. And let me tell you, his life was anything but a party. See, George was the last of his kind, a living, breathing reminder of what happens when humans don't read the please don't feed the animals signs. Humans, being the hungry, hungry hippos that they are, hunted the Pinta Island tortoise for its meat because, well, when you're hungry, everything looks like a snack. And to make matters worse, they also introduced goats to the island, which ate all the tortoise's food. It's like inviting your friend over for dinner and then eating all their food before they arrive. So there George was, all alone on his island, the last of his kind, a bachelor for life. They tried to find him a mate, they really did, but it was too late. Lonesome George passed away in 2012, taking with him the last hopes for the Pinta Island tortoise. Chapter 8, The Quagga Half Zebra Half Gone You know what's cooler than a zebra? Two zebras? Nope, I'm talking about the quagga, a zebra that was like, you know what, I'm feeling a little half and half today. Seriously, this animal was like a zebra that ran out of stripes halfway through. But, here's the thing, humans, being the fashion-forward thinkers that they are, decided that quagga hides were the new must-have accessory. They were like, forget stripes all over, we want stripes on the front and solid brown on the back. It's called fashion, look it up. So they hunted the quagga for its unique hide, because apparently looking good was more important than, you know, not making an animal go extinct. And guess what? It worked. The quagga is gone, but at least we have some stylish rugs, right? Right? Chapter 9, The Moa Like a Chicken But 10 Times Bigger and 100% Extinct Ever wish chickens were a little more dot 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 intimidating? Well, the Maori people of New Zealand had the answer. The Moa. This bird was basically a chicken that skipped leg day for a few million years. We're talking 12 feet tall, people. That's a big bird. But here's the thing. The Moa had one major design flaw. It couldn't fly. And when you're a giant, flightless bird living in a world with humans who just discovered the joys of roasting things over a fire, well, let's just say it's not a recipe for a long and happy life. The Maori people hunted the moa for its meat, its bones, its feathers, pretty much everything but its bad breath. And within a few hundred years, the moa, once the undisputed king of the New Zealand jungle, was nothing but a pile of bones. Chapter 10 the Booble Hartebeest, gone in a flash, like a really delicious flash. Last but not least we have the Booble Hartebeest, an antelope that was once found all over North Africa. This majestic creature was like the antelope version of a marathon runner, with long slender legs and a face that could launch a thousand ships. But here's the thing, the Booble Hartebeest made one fatal mistake, it tasted good, like really good. So good, in fact, that humans couldn't get enough of it. They hunted it for its meat, they hunted it for its hide, they probably even hunted it for its shoelaces, if they could figure out how to make shoelaces out of a booble hartebeest. And the saddest part? The booble hartebeest was already in trouble due to habitat loss, so the hunting just pushed it over the edge. It's like that time you stepped on a bug that was already on its last legs. You feel a little bad about it, but hey, it was going to happen anyway, right? So, we ate them all. Whoops, now what? So there you have it folks, 10 animals that we ate into extinction. It's a sobering thought, isn't it? But hey, at least we can learn from our mistakes, right? Let's try to be a little more mindful of our impact on the planet and maybe just maybe we can avoid making the same mistakes twice. On a lighter note, I guess we can be thankful that these animals didn't go extinct before we had a chance to try them, right? Imagine if the dodo tasted like chicken and we missed out on it. That would be a real tragedy, just kidding. But seriously, let's all do our part to protect the creatures we share this planet with. Who knows, maybe one day we'll even bring back the dodo. Imagine that, a world with dodos, okay, maybe not. But a guy can dream, right?